The flip side of a uh, price ceiling is a price floor. And once we've understood how a price ceiling works, a price floor is a pretty straightforward um, affair as far as analysis goes. A price floor is simply a government regulation that places a lower limit on the price at which a particular good or service or factor of production may be traded. To trade below the price floor, uh, below the legal minimum price, would be illegal. Uh, whether, nonetheless, trading does occur at um, prices below the legally set minimum is a question of uh, enforcement on the part of government, by and large. The classic example in textbooks here is the uh, minimum wage um, that's imposed in labour markets, especially labour markets for unskilled labour, that is uh, that by the standards of the society uh, might be seen as being paid very low wages and might be classified as a group of poor households. Nonetheless, the minimum wage is somewhat controversial. On the one hand, you have this kind of view which says that um, uh, a minimum wage really helps the poor, but it's opposed by uh, by the greedy rich who, um, because they would have to pay as business owners, they would have to pay higher minimum wages, therefore their costs would be higher, and this would eat into their profits. The other view holds that um, although you might have a couple of some workers who do get paid a higher wage and therefore are better off, um, this comes at the cost of firing some workers who firms can no longer afford to pay. Uh, and this kind of view represented in this cartoon here is the kind of view one tends to find in textbooks. So let's see how this would work. If we set the minimum wage above the equilibrium, then can see that the quantity of labour that would be demanded by employers would fall from the equilibrium of 5,000 workers down to 3,000 workers. Meanwhile, the at a higher minimum wage, it attracts additional labour to uh, the labour market, that is, workers are willing to work uh, more hours or more workers are willing to offer their services. And so we have an increase in the quantity of labour supplied to the market. That's not an increase in the quantity of labour hired, just an increase in the quantity of labour supplied. So the quantity demanded is less than the quantity supplied in the marketplace. And so those workers who supply their labour but are not demanded are what we would classify as unemployed. This type of unemployment is sometimes known as classical unemployment uh, because it's uh, a view that was held uh, in the uh, late 19th century and early 20th century by some classical economists and the um, first neoclassical economists as well before the advent of uh, John Maynard Keynes's macroeconomic work which said that unemployment could be explained in a different way. Now we can see here that this unemployment can be divided into two parts. Well, we've got first, there was 5,000 employed and now there's 3,000 employed. So that's 2,000 who were sacked. But that's not all of the unemployed because we remember that because of the higher minimum wage, it attracts more labor to the labor market. And so there's 2,000 workers who are attracted to the market in the hope of gaining employment at the higher minimum wage. So the uh, sacked plus the newly attracted workers gives us the total amount of unemployment due to the minimum wage. 